impact of this inflationary trend, high prices of crude, shortage of supplies, high prices of gas, of course, is impacting every country around the world. But the Sri Lankan economy seems to be very badly hit. It's going through some of its worst days. Uh, just about two decades ago, the nation was expected to overtake India in terms of development. It is now struggling for basic supplies. The situation is so dire that it has ordered street lights to be shut off because of the acute energy crisis. According to the nation's power minister, water levels at reservoirs are feeding hydroelectric projects have fallen to record lows. The minister also says they're siphoning off diesel from out-of-use vehicles to use. India has reached out to its neighbor by sending a diesel shipment of and uh, under a 500 million credit line. Uh, it has also, uh, we've also lent up to $2.5 billion in credit so far. But to get the full picture of what really is happening and why the situation has deteriorated so suddenly, I'm joined now by Dr. Ahilan Kadir Gamar, senior lecturer at the University of Jaffna. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Ahilan, for speaking with us this evening on ET Now. Can you first begin by giving us a sense of how dire the situation really is? We're reading all of these news reports, but you're speaking to us uh, from the ground, so to speak. Uh, how big is this crisis? This is by far the worst crisis in the uh, post-colonial history of uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, you know, after the Great Depression of the 1930s and the malaria epidemic uh, that was there in the 1930s where we lost about 2% of our population, this is by far the worst crisis. And uh, in terms of ordinary people's lives, uh, uh, essential items, whether it's food, whether it's um, uh, gas or oil, uh, all of these are in short supply, and the prices have skyrocketed. Um, while their wages remain the same, and for those who are involved in uh, day wage type of livelihoods, uh, the uh, demand for such uh, livelihoods have also decreased. So we are looking at um, a, a very difficult time and a lot of suffering in Sri Lanka at the moment. Tahilan, we're reading reports that there is a shortage of money to import medicines. Like we just said, street lights are being shut off. Is, is that the extent of impact on day-to-day -day lives? Uh, yes. So um, uh, uh, over a thousand bakeries have uh, shut down. Uh, canteens are not serving uh, tea because there's milk powder shortages. Uh, so it's uh, a crisis like one that people haven't seen in their uh, lifetime. And um, essential items, now if you take uh, rice, for example, compared to six months ago, the price of rice, which is our staple, has gone up by uh, 80%. And most importantly, when it comes to uh, energy prices and the availability, um, uh, diesel is uh, very low in supply, but even petrol and so on have required uh, long queues. So even transport is disrupted. And when transport is disrupted, all the other uh, goods get uh, affected as well. Can you tell us the reason? I mean, very broadly, uh, what we understand is this um, has become worse. The situation became worse with covid uh, I'm sure the inflationary shocks because of what's happening in Ukraine and Russia is not helping. But is that the genesis of this entire unraveling of the economy? This is a much more uh, long, drawn-out uh, crisis. Our debt stock has been increasing over the last uh, decade. Uh, we've been, uh, uh, we have a large trade deficit, and we had been uh, bridging that trade deficit to uh, tourism incomes and foreign remittances of migrants going and working in the Middle East. Now, with the pandemic, of course, uh, tourism and migrant remittances uh, declined. Tourism sector was completely disrupted. Uh, but we were already headed towards a crisis. I would say the Easter attacks in 2019 and then the pandemic sort of pushed us over the cliff because our debt levels were unsustainable. You know, in a sense, we were living beyond our means. We were uh, importing uh, uh, luxurious items, but we did not have the export earnings and the foreign reserve to meet those expenses. Now, two years ago, it was amply clear uh, when the pandemic hit that we could end up in a situation like what we are now, but the government took no steps to uh, address it. 
they could have prioritized imports, the essential items such as uh, uh, oil, uh, food, pharmaceuticals, and saved some of that foreign reserve. Even today, when you go to the supermarket, they are stacked with uh, imported chocolates and all other forms of uh, luxury goods. So there was no planning to meet uh, what was inevitable uh, crisis. You know, I just I just want to stress upon this point once again, Dr. Hailan. Is the general sense there now that this dire situation is in a large part due to just pure economic mismanagement by the government of the day? No, this has been the uh, policy of successive governments. Sri Lanka was the first country in South Asia to go through liberalization back in 1977. Uh, our policies were all encouraging imports and liberalization, and there were, the, the productive sectors were not developed. Uh, during the war, the urgencies of the government was addressing uh, the impact of the war and, and, and fighting the war against the LTT. But in the post-war years, now the war ended 13 years ago, and during that period, we borrowed a lot and invested in infrastructure, in the beautification of Colombo, and importing goods. And, and successive governments that followed this policy, and every time a crisis came, they went to the IMF, uh, they, they got a bailout, and they continued to increase the debt stock. So this mm. crisis was inevitable from uh, a number of governments, but this government, while the crisis was unfolding, did very little to address it. So it, it need not have been this severe, but it was the government's uh, neglect of this issue and their sole focus on consolidating political power, in heaping huge amount of political power with the president, in continuing to militarize uh, society. Those were their priorities as opposed to addressing the economic issues. And now, in a, in a sort of a desperate situation, Sri Lanka is going with a begging bowl to many countries around the world, and they are likely to also go to an IMF agreement. But this is not going to solve the problem. It might give us some leeway in the next months to address it in terms of being able to bring some imports. But we really have to change the direction of our economy. And unfortunately, the opposition also doesn't have a vision of how to address this crisis. So they're going to look at a lot of changes. With such a deep economic crisis, there's definitely going to be a lot of political changes. The worry, of course, is that those political changes could either be towards some kind of a progressive end, which brings Sri Lanka's minorities, we've been through a civil war, and helped to move in a progressive direction, or move in an even more polarized, even fascist direction, which might tear apart our society. So Sri Lanka is really at its crossroads, and at the heart of it is this economic crisis uh, that we're dealing with. Dr. Ahilan, I want to thank you deeply for taking out the time, speaking to us and telling us your story and what your beautiful nation is going through. We all wish you well and I'm sure Sri Lanka will overcome these rough times as well. Thank you once again. Dr. Ahilan there talking about the massive crisis that the Sri Lankan economy is going through.